This video is going to go over some of the enhancements in Gibbs Cam 12, and I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, how our development team came up with some of the ideas and some of the reasoning behind some of these changes. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see right away the whole interface, it looks a little bit different. When the development team started out, there was definitely some objectives. There's actually five of them that they really wanted to achieve. And one of the ones was they wanted to keep the same familiar kind of look and feel that everybody's been used to over the years. They definitely wanted to update the interface, as you can see here, but they didn't want to lose that really that that kind of Gibbs cam look and feel that everybody's so used to. So let's go over this just really quick. You can see, speaking of things being the same, but a little different, this is the menu across the top. You can see that, for instance, Spotify, all of the same options are there for you as they were in older versions of Gibbscam, except now they have these nice, really big, descriptive icons. As I go through, you can see that that applies to just about every one of these. Uh, file open is now a little bit new. It's easier to go back to where you've opened parts before. And we can see here that there's nice big icons. So where does that come from? So why did we choose these big icons to go across the top? So just to be clear, we can make them smaller if we wanted to. We can make them look like that, or you can just go ahead and click over here and make them a little bit bigger. So when Gibbs Cam was first developed way back in the 80s, the screen resolution was about 640 by 480. So here's what that looks like. This is actually 800 by 600 because my monitor won't actually go <laughs> to 640 by 480. But you can see here that everything's pretty compact. We didn't have a lot of room to work with. So we had to make the icons was kind of small. Those tiles had to be small. And not only that, but if you look at the bowl, they couldn't be very descriptive because we just didn't have enough room or enough resolution to make those. And that kind of just followed the software up until this release. So in this release, we wanted to, let me switch back. We wanted to make it so our more experienced users like myself, whose eyes may be getting a little older, they don't have to squint and look really hard. Now, that being said, we can definitely make them small if we wanted to. And that was another objective is they, the development team wanted to have as much customizability as possible. So if you look over here on the right on our, or I'm sorry, on the left on our tool tiles, if I right mouse button click, I can actually make those smaller icons. So those look really tiny now that you saw the other ones, but these are actually the same size as the standard Gibbs Cam icons have been in the past. So I'm going to just go ahead and make those bigger just so we can see them a little bit better. And again, we can just adjust this, pull this down, things like that. These are called toolbars. So we can actually, what's called tear away, we can tear those toolbars and we can place them pretty much anywhere we want. So I'm going to take this down, put it over here. So one thing about these toolbars is when you load it, I'm going to put this back up here real quick. When you load these toolbars, they're basically in the same order that you're used to, but instead of being from the top down on the right-hand side, they go from left to right across the top. So you can imagine if I just took this toolbar, I can dock it over here on the right-hand side. So that might look familiar to our, our more experienced users, right? So there's our document dialog, our view palette, coordinate systems and geometry and our body bag. So really we wanted, again, we wanted to keep that look and feel, which we did, but we also wanted to give you guys the choice of what you wanted. Now, speaking of choice, you can actually customize these toolbars. You can turn them off. Let's say for instance, if you don't have MTM, you can turn that one off. Summaries, we can turn that off. If you never use CAD, or we can go ahead and turn these back on. So not only do you have these preset toolbars, that you can turn on and off, but you can also make your own and you can customize these. So in order to customize them, let's say for instance, I use 2D Rotate a lot. I can just take this and drag it right up to the top and you can see that it just inserts right inside of that toolbar. If I wanna take it away, I can pull it down. Let's say for instance, I never use my geometry palette. I can take that and pull it down, but I use it a lot, so I'm gonna leave it up there. That being said, we can also make our own toolbars. We can make a toolbar here. See, if I pull this away, you can see it has the cam right here. So that's actually this one. We can actually make our own that has icons in it that are specific to what how we use Gibbs Cam. And this is something that we've heard over the years. Now, speaking of that, you know, what we've heard over the years, um, I want to talk about where a lot of these changes came from. So if you, right when you loaded Gibbs Cam, 
you have the little box option to send us anonymous user data. You can also, I, I've, I accessed it through files, or I'm sorry, file and preferences. And then on the interface tab, you can see it's right here. Uh, we actually really look at this stuff. And just to be, just to be clear, it is totally anonymous. We only really just kind of record mouse clicks. We don't record files, file names, geometry, anything like that. I mean, it's really totally anonymous, but we are able to get a lot of usage statistics about how you guys use Gibbscam. And I'm gonna, that's the, that leads me into my next topic is the machining palette. So remember we used to, in Gibbscam, here, let me move this back over in the middle. Here's my tools and my cam, right? We would we would open these two up and then we would get the palette up here and that's where we would choose our process, you know, roughing, uh, contour, 3D, advanced 3D, things like that. What the user data showed us was people were taking that palette and they were moving it all around. So actually this is a really great opportunity to show you another great addition. So we have the view palette, just like we used to. It's right here. Right. And we gave it this cool little animation that kind of rolls and unrolls, winds, unwinds. But we've also given you the ability to access all of those view palette options right down here in the world coordinate system. Here we have fit to screen. Here are all of our different views. I was in the isometric and fit to view. So if you don't want this view palette or if you find yourself moving around or like me, you have a little problem just selecting that that little edge to move it like that you can always access that stuff down here. All right, speaking of which, so back to the machining palette. So we found that a lot of people were moving that machining palette out of the way, left and right. And our development team thought about it, you know, the majority of that machining palette, you really only use once when you're creating the tool path. You drag and drop that tile down for roughing or finishing or whatever it is. And then you really don't mess with it very much except for the do it and redo buttons, which I'm gonna get to in a second. So what development decided was, let's put that at the fingertips of the user. So if I come down here, right to my process tree or my my process tile list, I double click and there it is right there. And then I can just right here, I can say, you know what, I wanna do a contour. So here's the other thing that's great. So once you select that process, Gibbscam lists the tools that you have in your tool list up here, right next to it. And it gives you the appropriate tools broken down, not by number, but by 2D contour, surface contour, profile, and then others, which are drills and things like that. So I'm doing a profile, so I'm going to do a 2D contour, so it's probably going to be one of these in my tool list, you can see from up here. Or if I want to create a tool, I can do it right here just by clicking new, and then you get the ever familiar tool menu window. You can also create tools just like you used to be able to by double clicking up here in your tool tile list. So again, we haven't taken anything away. We've just given you a couple more places to find some of the functions that you're used to. Let me go ahead and close this out real quick. All right, so another thing nice here is we have this clear button. So instead of having to drag this all the way over to the garbage can or hit delete, we just hit clear and it clears that list out. So I'm gonna make just a real quick tool path here. It's just gonna be an advanced 3D. And I'm going to use say, a half inch end mill. All right. So also in that machining palette were the do it and redo it buttons, something that, you know, Gibbs Cam is kind of known for. It's as easy as just do it or redo it. We've now given you three different places to find these buttons. Uh, first off, we have them right here, as you've kind of noticed right now, these big buttons here that say do it and redo it. So let's go ahead and just check the settings really quick. So I'm going to do a silhouette. And I'm going to say no stock and hit do it. There we go, we have it. So let's say we wanted to change something, for instance, maybe the step down or step over. Let's say we wanted the Z step down to be a little bit bigger. So now to redo, we can go over here or we can actually go right inside of the window. This is something I like a lot. You don't have to keep going back and forth and back and forth. It's right inside of the window. We have our do it and then our redo button. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit redo. And there we go. So the third place, you can find it is if you right click anywhere on the screen. Now this is really, this is a great option for people that may 
select their geometry after they set their settings. So let's say I, I went through, I set all of my parameters here, everything is great, okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and select my geometry. So let's say I just wanna do this, I will just say this one. Instead of having to come back over here, or come down there, right here I can say, you know what, I'm gonna select that geometry, right mouse button click and hit do it. So really you have all of this efficiency now right at your fingertips. This is actually a good time to go over this down here. This is the process window that used to pop up in the bottom right hand corner. This is that process window that used to pop up. Because you can see there's a little pin there. We can actually hide if we wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it up for now. So hopefully by now you're getting kind of a, a feel for uh, the new, I shouldn't say the new interface or even the um, different interface. It's more of just an enhanced interface. Like I said, a lot of this stuff looks really familiar. These windows are all the same. Uh, the tile lists remain the same, but we're just giving you a little bit more power and a little bit more options to make your job more efficient. As I mentioned before, when coming up with this uh, enhanced interface, this kind of modified interface, our development team really, they'd had those five objectives, retain the Gibbs Cam user experience, provide a modern look and feel, improve user efficiency, have an easy transition for experienced users, that's what we're going through right now, and offer you know powerful customizability. And I showed pretty much all that right now. Now what I showed you isn't the limit of what's new, there's tons of other stuff. Keep an eye out for videos and tutorials and things like that in the near future. There are definitely some big changes, but our development team worked really hard to keep the same Gibbscam workflow that we're all used to. And this goes to the whole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The workflow of Gibbs has grown and changed over the years because of feedback we've gotten from you, from the users, not only with that you know, anonymous data, but also user groups. What we hear from the resellers, when you guys call technical support, we listen to you and this is the kind of the culmination of all of that. But I just wanted to give you a peek behind the curtain so you can see where a lot of these changes have come from and it's not just you know, our developers just changing things to change things. Thank you for watching.